everybody and welcome back to the farm. Here in central New York in late December, we are hard into winter. But if you look around, you really can't tell other than an intermittent dusting of snow that we keep getting. The weather's been halfway decent. I better knock on some wood. And everything at the farm seems good for the season. So before we dive into anything that we're doing in winter, I want to take a look backwards at some of the projects that I started over the summer, and we'll continue them as we go through the winter. So let's rewind a little bit all the way back to January of last year. If you recall, I purchased a trailer last year. This is a heavy axle trailer. It's about four feet by six feet, with 2,000 pound axles and my goal for this was to create a watering trailer that I could leave along the side of the field solar powered with a 12 volt pump and just feed water into the field. I also bought one of these plastic water tanks and the intent is to marry the two together uh, with some additional metal and pieces to create something that I could tow and leave behind. So fast forward a little bit to summer of this year, around July, and I figured it was time to start working on it because the trailer thus far had only been used to hold the dying remains of all the plants that I created last year that never got planted at my farm because my tractor broke down. I did give a bunch away, but I just couldn't bring myself to throw them out. So what I ended up doing is I stripped down the trailer of all of the old wood that was on the sides. Now you may remember my welder and my plasma cutter that I bought last winter also. These things work incredible. So I started the process basically by creating a, a bunch of stitch welds along these fenders. These fenders were only held on by one or two small bolts and they were very wobbly. So I wanted to fix this. I wanted to make them integral to the structure of the trailer. So I did this on one side of the trailer and then I moved over to the other side of the trailer. This metal is fairly thick. It's in some areas an eighth to a quarter inch steel. So I had to grind down all of the finish that was on this metal and I had to turn the power of the welder up fairly high to get good penetration between the different pieces. I also took this opportunity to go through and fill a bunch of old holes that were drilled into the trailer surface. I don't know what was mounted in these holes, uh, but certainly for my use they're not needed and I didn't want any additional penetrations where rust could form or you know things could go through. Now in my process of testing this welder I'm using flux cord solder right now. I didn't buy a gas bottle, I'm not doing gas shielding. I wanted to see at 208 volts how this would work with just standard flux core solder and it works great. It's one of the best welders I've used. So the next step was to grind down some of the welds to make them smooth and I'm using a flap disc sander wheel on here with a very coarse grit and it worked fine I didn't need to grind anything perfectly flat all I needed was a good surface that paint would adhere to and that was the next step black rust-oleum paint I purchased several cans and I just went around and I painted and I always seem to forget that I have this sprayer handle a trigger handle for spray paint cans which makes this process so much better. If you haven't ever used one of these, certainly go out and get one. So with a, a little bit of a time lapse, you can see that the transformation of painting the trailer really creates a nice end result with black Rust-Oleum and with that trigger. Now it's just a matter of applying some new wood. I wanted to keep the side structure fairly similar to what it was before so I bought a bunch of pressure treated wood and I created side panels and panels for the front and basically this was two rows top and bottom on both sides and the front 
and that seemed like it would be enough to keep everything contained in the trailer. So with a few taps, I sent it home, and the sides came out great. I spared you some of the details. But what I realized is that for the front of the trailer, I didn't have anything great to anchor the wood to. So I cut down some pieces of steel, and I welded on some tabs that went the full height, bottom to top, in the front of the trailer. So using the same welding technique, I just created some stitch welds. And then I ground them down, and I painted them. The strength of these welds is really good with this welder, uh, and I guess the technique too. I could grab these ears, these tabs, and I could shake them violently, and all that ends up happening is it moves the trailer. So these things are definitely on there, certainly well enough for some pieces of wood. And the end result looks really good once painted. So in the mock-up phase of this trailer build, all I did was drill some pilot holes and attach these boards with screws, just to make sure that everything fit and was in the correct place. For the final attachment method, I used carriage bolts through all of the pieces of wood through the steel, and that is what holds everything together. But as you can see, the end result here looks really nice. So I know I'm going to get some hate on this video for sanding pressure treated wood, but I really, I wasn't sanding this to, um, you know, do anything other than remove some of the burrs. So I'm not sanding pressure treated wood. But I did get the burrs off and then it was just a matter of going through and using some Valspar deck stain. And I also recruited my mom in this process. This is my mom's YouTube debut. She helped me give a first coat to a lot of the boards that you see on the trailer here. And everything turned out very nice. Mom did a great job. This was a tedious process, but I really like this color for a very specific reason that will become apparent eventually. Orange and black. I don't need to be on camera. Yes, you do, Mom. Up at the front of the trailer, I ended up countersinking the holes that I drilled for the carriage bolts, because if I didn't, the carriage bolt head stuck out past the board, and because of the measurements of my front boards, it made it impossible for those to slide into place. So with the head countersunk, it created a nice flush surface, and then my front boards just slid right into place. So everything worked good. I did go over and stain those countersunk areas just for some water protection. And this is what the first step looked like. Everything turned out nice. Now, as you can see, I did paint this deck of the trailer with black Rust-Oleum. I rolled it on nice and thick because I also wanted to skin the deck with new deck boards. There was nothing structurally wrong with the boards that were on the deck, but I did want a nice, smooth, flat, new surface for bringing up the water tote and for mounting all the other stuff um, onto the deck of this trailer. So I just went right over the original deck with new deck boards. And that was fine. They screwed right down onto it and the overall fit and finish ended up being completely perfect. There was no need to replace the underlying wood. Just give it a nice freshen up with some new deck boards. So once the new deck was installed and screwed down, the obvious next step was to use more of this Velspar deck stain and stain the entire surface of that new deck that I just put on there. 
So I used the exact same color and I went through and I gave all wood surfaces two coats of this stain for maximum protection. I also flipped over the tote and I sanded, or deburred I guess, uh, the bottom wood structure that the plastic and the metal connects to. And then I gave it two coats of the same deck stain uh, for aesthetic purposes, but also to help protect this wood because once this is on there, I want it to be on there semi-permanently until something rots away at least. And then once everything was dry, it was just a matter of sliding the tote up onto the trailer. And when I tell you there's a quarter inch of space on each side, that's all there is. This tote fits perfectly. So I installed a bunch of D-rings onto the trailer inside and around. And then I used some lag bolts to connect it to the wood. And my purpose of doing this is just for mounting points. Everybody needs mounting points on trailers. And I know what the purpose of this trailer is today, being a water trailer, but you never know when you have to mount something on here. So I went around the entire trailer and I put these D-rings around. Now I guess I can help strap the tote to these D-rings, but the reality is once that tote is full of water, it weighs about 2,000 pounds. So these little D-rings aren't going to do anything to hold that sort of weight uh, against gravity or motion, but it's good to have mounting points. So here's a midway walk around of the trailer. It's about 50% done right now. Of course, I have to add on trailer lights and redo the wiring of the trailer, but there's a lot more that has to go onto the trailer also. And a lot of this is going to have to wait for the spring, but there's still some construction that I needed to do, some metal fabrication. And that has to do with the solar panel. I bought a really large solar panel, uh, dimensionally large. And what I wanted to do was take all of the components of this kit with a 12 volt car battery and mount them on the trailer so that this has perpetual power. And this is roughly where I want to mount this fairly large solar panel. I want to mount it up out of the way in the front of the trailer above the tote. But I still want the tote to be removable if it needs to be. So in order to do all this, I had to fabricate a stand for this panel. So I got a bunch of one inch angle iron from Lowe's and I cut it to fit so that the solar panel had about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of play all around this structure. And then I just went through and I created some tack welds to hold it in place just enough so that I could test fit the solar panel. And if everything goes well, it should fit right down into the structure, and it does. It fits perfectly. So now that this is in there, I could simply go through and finish weld it, which I did, and then take the grinder and uh, grind everything smooth. Again, this is a flap sanding disc. And much like everything, it got a nice thick coat of black rust-oleum. Now, the creation of that was just one small step. Now I have to mount it up above the water tote. So I got more one-inch angle iron and I created some vertical risers and I got it into place. And this is what the finished product looks like of that solar panel stand. Now I mounted this thing into all the key sections of the trailer for rigidity. So there's absolutely no flex to this. If I move this, the entire trailer moves, which is perfect. And that's where we left off for the season. So now here we are today, late December. You can see the area that I removed the flower garden from the last video. And here sits my partially completed watering trailer. So this is going to have to be completed during the spring, but you can see that I've added a couple things and I've left a few 
unfinished projects sitting on top of it. But it's held up perfectly well for the last couple months that it's been sitting out here, and I look forward to finishing it up when the weather gets nice again. So with all of that said, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, because so much has happened this fall at the farm, including the arrival of a lot of equipment. And we're going to go through some of these in coming videos, but remember, there's a lot more summer projects we have to catch up on, and we will do that in coming videos. But for now, that's it for this video, so we'll see you on the next one.